Enslave Europe? That is just like the man. A slave in the saloon and a brawler in the antechamber. He intrigued and speechified forever. I do not know a man of less probity, but look for the back. There must be another letter. Your firmness and your courage alone can deliver the Republic from the frightful precipice prepared for it by the hypocrisy, perfidy, and practice criminality of the agents of the altar and the throne. Was he then already plotting the conspiracy of the Concordat? I recognize the style of his pamphlets. Conspiracy? Yes, the generals who defile nowadays before missionaries, vergers, cross-bearers were then indignant at my reopening the churches. My death was to expiate the outrage offered to reason. Times are much altered, but we shall return to the subject. Read on, I wish to hear his letter. I saw it just now. You mean that where his honor begins to totter? Precisely. Honor was with him, what modesty is with women, a fly. The least thing alarmed it. He only felt secure at the menage. But proceed, I'm listening to you. To the general-in-chief. I saw General Kellerman in passing through Chambery and communicated to him your notes. He answered first that the depot of the 21st Demi Brigade has been sent to Italy and that it must now have arrived at Milan. Secondly, that the chief of your staff has only to order the 79th Demi Brigade to march and that he can see no objection to it. He told me that he cannot get rid of the small number of cavalry he has at Lyon. He must have written to you on the subject. He will send you swords, but he wants money. I have found the Republican spirit grown very lukewarm. Since my passage through the interior of the country, the counter revolution is affecting itself in the minds of the people. The laws are without vigor. And the emigrants return, and the tribunal acquit part of them and do not seek after the remainder. Many deputies say there is in the assembly of 500 a party decided for the reestablishment of royalty. Another party is planning a movement to defeat this faction. But if it takes place, the commotion will be dreadful, for those who shall have excited it will no longer be able to repress it. In the midst of this conflict, there is a class of men who fear anarchy as much as royalism. They say little and are not much seen, but they wait for the proper moment to annihilate the two parties, one by the other. These men always apply calming measures to the events that are preparing, and they gain time so that by removing the period of the explosion from day to day, the government will, by the Greeks, become firmly established, provided it acts with order and prudence. The 500 fear the directory, and that is enough to ensure the superiority of the latter, but to maintain it, they must skillfully take advantage of circumstances as they may occur, know how to give rise to others, and frighten at least by appearances, those members who march openly and with rapid strides to the reestablishment of the throne, these gentlemen seem to have taken peace chagrin for their mark. He is flattered, coaxed, caressed. They appear to laugh at him, and in point of fact, the party that thrusts him forward knows very well that he is a man of very ordinary stamp. Pichigru has been base enough to abandon the Republican cause. He confounds men with events and attempts to have been made in vain to convert him, urged to explain his sentiments. He has answered foolishly, without logic and with the tone of a man puffed up with pride, and who fancies that his name alone is worth an army. Poor man, alas, he's not very strong. The ice is broken, Pichigru is now known, his old friends forsake him, and he loses every day a part of his colossal reputation. I met him at Cleberas with several northern generals, but we scarcely noticed each other. He had probably been informed of the way in which I had spoken of him, and he was extremely reserved. I followed his example. The three generals are on the list to command the guard of the assembly of 500. The first is Clavert, the second is Say, and the third Surrier. Everybody has felt that such a command would not be very flattering for either of those three generals, and everyone has made his remarks upon the subject. And the last argument seems to be this. All these three personages have a reputation and would be very useful in the event of commotion, in rallying round the legislative body a great number of soldiers and officers of the armies in which they have served, Kleber will not accept the command. Republican, from philosophy, he laughs at the perplexity of some and at the awkwardness of others, but 
If ever a commotion takes place, Clebert will put his head out of the window to look at the two parties and will go and range himself on that side where he will perceive tricolored croquettes. He is desirous of visiting the field of your glory. I shall bring him with me and he will be delighted to see the man whose brilliant achievements he has so often admired in the number of flags taken and prisoners made, but still more in the direction he has given to the reins of government. Paris is a horrible residence for a man of honor. I'm tired to death of it and shall leave it very soon. I shall endeavor to send you some cavalry if possible. The Richepin's division, Carnot is convinced that if the operations of the war again become active, you will want reinforcements of both cavalry and infantry. I shall speak to Barat and Rubel on the subject tomorrow. Adieu. I love you as much as I esteem you. There has been a want of sense in all that man's proceedings, which I cannot account for. He only aspired after fame and celebrity, and when he had the finest opportunities in the world to acquire them, he did not avail himself of them. At Yenna, he might have covered himself with glory. He had only to march by so doing, he would have placed himself in the rear of the Prussian army, and the whole would have been taken. In Saxony, in Belgium, the result would have been unique in history, but it required a soul to conceive and execute. The emperor expiated a great life on the offenses of this general, not against himself, he did not value that, but against France, which had given him birth and the army to which he owed everything. At Austerlitz, he had suffered his rights to be broken through. He had slumbered on the Elba and run away at Wagram. He had many times exposed her eagles to defeat and had at last guided the savages of the Don and the Dallacarlia against them. Napoleon was animated and vehement. I endeavored to turn the conversation into another channel. I thought the diplomatic career of Bernadotte irreproachable and spoke about it. What? His talents? But the embassy was a series of blunders. To say was highly incensed against him and Moreau shrugged up his shoulders. If his best friends condemned him, he hoisted her colors. Could he do less? But they had no connection with the riot. The people of Vienna had been taught upon 50 fields of battle to respect those colors. I would have taken care not to insult them, but I had spared the emigrants in Italy. I had not pursued to the last extremity a few unfortunate Frenchmen in the last stage of misery and had incurred the blame of the menage. It was necessary to give proofs of patriotism and deserve praises the ambassador endeavored to submit to his jurisdiction all the emigrants that were beyond the rhine men rejected by france were not amenable to his agents they became indignant at a persecution without object raised up and excited a few poor wretches and thus the officious meddling of a blundering busybody had well nigh reopened the arena is that what you admire I had heard other causes assigned to the insurrection. Where in this memoirs? I had the details from one of my friends who was at Vienna at the time. And from whom did your friend hear them? From a Pole who possessed the confidence of Bernadotte. Yeah? Yes, sire. The providence of the embassy and the guide which the Austrian police had had the art of giving him. And accordingly, the citizen ambassador transmitted precious information to Brun. If the conqueror of the Helder had not possessed the instinct necessary for that kind of war, the Italian Vespers would have taken place. You have resided a long time in Florence and have, of course, heard of the movements of Manfredini at that period. No, sire. I only know that in one of his clandestine journeys to Vienna, he was strangely frightened by one of your soldiers. How so? The enemy's troops insulted our posts and provoked them with words and gestures. Advance with your corporal, cried an old Austrian sergeant to the commanding officer of the French round. If, replied the Frenchman, you had a corporal like him and an escort like his, you would come more openly to the point. Manfredini, who was passing by, thought the observation intended for him and believing himself discovered, became less circumspect. Rome broke out too soon. Bristol was taken by surprise and the scheme failed. But doctor, he told me, if I recollect rightly, that you had hitherto only frequented corpses. 
let me tell you that those corpses were tolerably well informed of the state of affairs. The account they have given you is not true in every particular, but neither is it altogether false. Yet, after all, it is not impossible that a word pronounced by chance may have had the result you ascribe to it. The most important determinations have often been produced by circumstances quite as trivial as the one you have just mentioned. Besides, Manfredini had some reason to believe in the tact of our soldiers. I endeavored to recollect the circumstance Emperor was alluding to and learned that, in point of fact, the addition of Mantua was due as much to their sagacity as to their courage. Alvinzi was hastening to its assistance with a numerous army and had sent before him a confidential man to whom he had entrusted his dispatches. The sorties of the garrison were to coincide with his attacks. It was necessary to concert measures for that purpose. And he had nearly succeeded. Our lives were ready past and the M3 was on the point of entering the fortress when he was seized by a patrol. He was questioned and searched, but nothing was found on his person, and he was going to be placed with the mass of other prisoners when a Voltigeur present at the interrogatory took him to task. Where are your orders? I have none. You have, but you have some there in your belly. Confess, or my sword shall soon bring them to light. The Austrian was disconcerted, and after some hesitation, owned the fact, and was shut up in a separate room until he had been delivered of his dispatches. They were enclosed in a small cylinder, covered over with a coat of wax, which was dipped in a kind of elixir to uh, facilitate its passage. The imperialists had very often had recourse to that expedient, but the uh, perspicacity of this vulture shirt deterred them from attempting to use it in the future. This recalls to my mind an anecdote relating to the war with Corsica, which the emperor often told me. Pauli was master of the island, and his mountaineers covered the plain. It was impossible to correspond with the patriots scattered about in the interior, and yet it was highly expedient to do so, and to threaten Pauli on his rear in order to prevent his marching on us. I was acquainted, said Napoleon, with the friends of France. I knew those that were devoted and might be relied upon, and I induced Lacombe Saint-Michel to give them commissions. The difficulty was to get the commissions delivered, for the passes were well guarded, and the roads covered with spies, and success was therefore not probable. I, however, made the attempt. I chose the cunning, active countryman, whom I dressed up in the most miserable rags I could find, and lodged him amongst the mountaineers. He was stopped at every post, and for a length of time, to see their vigilance. On these occasions, he placed on the ground the gourd he carried in his hands and encouraged and facilitated the search of his person. He had no other object, he said, than to obtain some means of supporting his existence. He had relations in Iaccio who were in easy circumstances, and he was going to employ the compassion. Was it to be supposed that he, in his miserable condition, would trouble his head about anything else? That he would serve the French who had destroyed his cottage? He proceeded in this manner as far as court, where the gendarmerie, less confiding, cut up his clothes from head to foot, even to the soles of his shoes, but nothing was found, and he was going to be released. And someone thought it would be better to inform Polly, a man who goes about the country to beg in the circumstances in which we are placed. He must be an emissary. Go and search him. He has a message. Impossible. We have taken his dress to pieces, thread by thread. Every part of it has been undone. His mission is then verbal, for he has one. Question him again. We have tried everything. What has he about him? A little gourd. Break it! They did so, and the commissions were found in it. Pauli was not to be so easily deceived. The favorable state of the emperor's health did not long continue. His strength was nearly exhausted. The influence of the latitude was unabated, and it was evident that he must fall a prey to it. Indeed, it was not long before a situation became extremely satisfactory. I left him tolerably well on the 10th, and the next day I found him very much altered.